This week, we're building a turbo log for an LS-based motor. What is going on YouTube? It's been a while. Trevor here. I know it's been actually quite a while, a couple years since I've done a video, but I'm gonna get back into it. I just had life get in the way, didn't get a chance to video anything. So been talking to a couple other guys that are prominent on YouTube and got some motivation to do some more videos. Well, I'm hoping to bring you a video a week for the next little while, maybe more in the future, we'll see what time allows, but I wanna get regular videos up there. I have a ton of projects uh, that I'm working on. I have my Model A, uh, my Ranger, I have a 65C10, plus all the other small little fabrication stuff I do. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that I can get you videos on the regular, I just gotta film it, just gotta figure this filming stuff out, so be patient with me. I'm not a film guy, I'm not a camera guy or a computer guy, so I'm trying to figure it out, doing research, talking to other guys, but I think we're on the right path now. So anyway, today I decided that I'm gonna build another turbo log manifold for LS based motors. Uh, we built one last summer for my buddy Jay, put it on his 1500 Silverado pickup, and worked real well. Ran that truck into the 1140s, and this summer we're hoping we we're hoping to get it down into the 10s. So I um, I'll have footage of that thing too. I want to do videos on it. I want to get a lot of more content and stuff on the channel. So anyway, here's here's one that I've got built almost. Just missing this tube here. Um, it is. Schedule 40 pipe, three and a half inch body, one and a half inch runners, um, plasma cut the flange, uh, five eighths flange for the turbo. It's all stuff you can buy at local pipe supply place. Um, there's a local guy to me that sells all this stuff, ordered it up. It's just a matter of machining and welding it all together. I mean, not crazy expensive, not really that difficult to do. You can do this notching by hand with a grinder. It's not that hard to do. So don't be afraid to try it. You can do it in your own shop. Just get the pieces and notch it. You might have to purchase the flanges, but minor. You can find them all over eBay. LS based stuff is becoming so popular that you can pretty much find it anywhere. So. That being said, I'm going to build another one here. I'll give you a quick step-by-step -step of what I got to do, and we'll go from there. Okay, to start out, what we're going to do is, I didn't get the video, but I plasma cut out the flange that bolts to the head. You can find these for you guys. You can find them anywhere on eBay. Like I said, LS stuff is becoming super popular. There's tons of guys laser cutting them, plasma cutting them, water jetting them. Me, I have a plasma cutter access so I plasma cut them up myself you can get find the drawing online it's not that hard so plasma cut this out I had footage of it but my camera messed up so I lost it I apologize so anyway you get those that bolts there so we can have a good base to start off of here we have the flange that welds to the hot side of the turbo this flange that mates it that goes on the crossover pipe this flange that goes on the other side of the crossover pipe that hooks it to the stock manifold. Plasma cut all those. These are cut out of 5 16 And, uh, oh sorry, these are cut out of 3 8 plate. As well as this is cut from 3 8 plate. Next up, we're going to take these elbows, which I purchased, like I said, from the plumbing store. Well, the pipe store. Um, they're just one and a half inch. Schedule 40, I believe. Um, I'm going to take them. We're going to notch them on the proper angle and the proper diameter to fit on the log so that when I put them all together 
like so. The log will fit here. There'll be a nice gap. It'll be easy to TIG weld. We won't have any huge gaps to fill or we won't have any chance for the welds to fail with a big gap. So what we'll do is we're going to take this over to the mill. We're going to put it in the fixture that I made to hold these. Um, they can be tricky to hold to cope. You got to get creative sometimes in order to hold these. Like I said, these tubes can be a pain to hold on to, to cope. Hard grabbing a vise. They're not long enough to hold into a tubing notcher. So they can cause you a little bit of trouble. What I ended up doing was I built a little fixture that's on the right angle for the cope I need. Um, all I do is it's got a little nub here, I guess, or a boss, whatever you want to call it. These slide right on like that. This clamp goes on it. Locks into place. I center up my milling cutter on the tube. Touch off on the edge. Mill it cope it down. Each one will be the same. Each one's done exactly the same. Um, that being said, you don't need a fancy mill. You don't need fancy tools to do it. You can use a carbide burr, flap wheel, whatever you have in your shop, but it can be done. I used to have to do it that way before I got my mill. But anyway, let's throw this up in the mill. We'll uh, get it indicated centered, get the milling cutter put in, and we'll cope these two. Okay, so we got the three tubes coped. This here, I had done previously I again, videoed it, but the video failed on me, so. But anyway, it's a piece of three and a half scheduled pipe with a 90 and a 45. I welded them together. I put them in the mill, picked up center and all that. And then I uh, hole sawed the three spots where these are going to go on. So they're going to go one like that, like that, and like that. I got this dimension from the file that I got for this um, the flange. So that the, the three, three match up with that. The fourth one, it's, uh, it's kind of a complicated tube. All it is is a a straight tube but it's on a 45 degree angle this way and a little bit of an angle offset this way it's a coped tube on a compound angle so that one I'll show you after here once we get we got to get all these other tacked on before we can measure up for that final tube that final tube is kind of a hand fit kind of deal um, which then I have to drill here and burr by hand with a carbide burr to make the opening as there is no way to possibly machine it in the middle. So that being said, let's get this thing 
mocked up and tacked together. So this is the final runner. Like I said, it's just a straight piece of one and a half schedule 40 pipe as well that I leave long. I have to make two of these runners. So I'm going to cope both ends of it. Then I'll cut it in half, use what I need. Uh, I just did some looking here on my paperwork. I don't know if anybody, you, any of you guys do this, but I have a little book that I keep all my info, all my stuff that I need to remember in. It's handy. Um, Keep it handy, I write down everything, all the degrees, the cope diameters, all that for these turbo manifolds so that if I do need to make another one in the future, I have everything. Um, I've been in the position where I make a one-off thing, make it, find out that somebody else wants another one, my buddy wants another one, and then I gotta totally go through the process again to figure out what I've done or what my measurements are. So anyway, I write it down. I uh, just looked at here that the that front pipe on the last one has a 45 degree angle on it and the cope is offset about half an inch on this pipe. So we're gonna set it up in the mill. I'll put it in my clamp. We're gonna center it up with the cutter. Then we're gonna offset one way, 500 thou. Pipe takes a little bit of hand working. It's not a direct drop in fit. I have to manipulate it grind it here, grind it there to get it to fit. And then before I weld it in, I have to manually grind the hole in there. So let's get to uh, figuring that pipe out and coping it. Okay, as you can see, once I have this tube coped on the mill there, I still had to take the grinder just because these tubes just aren't 100% every time, 45, so it does take a little hand finessing to get those to fit. Um, as you saw, after I coped it, I laid it in there, I marked it, uh, plasma cut the opening, just roughly, then I die ground it to what I needed, put the tube back in, tack welded it in place, and now it's ready to uh, pretty much finish well. That being said, this header turbo log is pretty much done. I have to finish weld 
this final pipe in, uh, finish well the flange up here in, and it's good to go. I'm not sure which flange we're going to put here for the crossover pipe. There was talks that there was going to be a V-band on it, so I'm just going to leave it for now. This other one that I got started, I do have the other tube cut and coped. I just have to go through the same procedure, fit it onto here, drill the hole, or plasma cut the hole, die grind it, and get it to fit. So anyway, that's it for this week. Don't forget to like it, subscribe, share it with your friends, and I will see you next week with another video. Not sure what yet, but I will have one for you next week.